Hello everybody, this is TechCut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is installing Ubuntu Server. The reason I'm making this video is because I'm gonna be referencing this in future projects, so I figured here was a good starting point. Now, I'm not gonna go over actually burning images to the USBs, which you are gonna to need to do, but if you do need to know how to do that, there'll be a link in the description to an article. If you're watching this video from techhut.tv, you're already in the right place. So when you first turn on your system, you're gonna need to go into either your BIOS or your boot menu. This motherboard doesn't have a specific boot menu, so I do need to go into my BIOS and change the boot order. Depending on your motherboard, you either hit escape, delete, F10, F12, something to get into it. It will flash that on the post screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this UEFI USB to the top of the priority and then we could go ahead escape out of here save and exit save configuration and reset and now when it resets it should boot into that ubuntu server usb that we just went ahead and flashed so here is my post screen there we go so we can see that we can either boot to the next volume uh, install the ubuntu server and a couple more options we're going to want to go ahead and install the ubuntu server so right now it's loading everything up. It may take a little bit because this is running off of a USB. Depending on what type of USB you use, if you used a USB 2.0, it's definitely going to take longer than a USB 3.0. Also dependent on whatever port you plugged it into on your computer. All right, so once the boot process has finished, the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select our language. Now you can see up there it says use the up down keys to move around and enter to select the language. So for me I'm just going to go with English. And then here we have a couple more options. This is where you change your keyboard layout. So if you do have a different keyboard than what is already selected, you'd go ahead go up here and select it. Or you could use identify keyboard and what this will do is try to auto detect what keyboard you're using. But this all looks good to me so I'm going to go ahead and go with done. And then next we're going to go ahead and make sure our networks look good. This looks good to me. I'm plugged in with a standard ethernet connector which being that this is ubuntu server i would not really recommend using wi-fi you could still do a wi-fi connection but we're not going to get into that today you can see i actually have two different ethernet ports i have it plugged into the second ethernet port if you do hit enter here you have a couple different options such as editing the ipv4 and 6 as well as seeing some additional info about that specific network connection let's go ahead and close out of there we can see that i do have a good connection so we'll hit done Next, we have a proxy address. Now here, we're just gonna leave it at default. I will have a link on techhut.tv that will talk about this a little bit more, but for our use case, we don't need to do this and we could always set this up later. So we're gonna go ahead and hit done. Now for the mirror, it's just gonna go ahead and pull all the updates and packages from the ubuntu.com website. That's good enough for me, but if you want to, you could go ahead and change that. I'm gonna hit done. And now here is where you're going to select the disk. Now I do have two disks in here. So you can see I have a terabyte drive and a 500 gigabyte drive. Now I actually want to use the 500 gigabyte drive as my primary drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter to make sure that's selected. I do not want to set this up as an LVM group. I just don't need the features that that provides. But if you do want to do that and encrypt your drive, you could select this, encrypt it, and then add passphrases to make sure your hard drive is encrypted. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that. And if you wanted to, you could also do custom storage layouts. If I selected that and went next, it would go to a partition manager. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna go with this selection and hit done. And then from here, it's gonna give you a little overview of your file system. We can see that we have the root drive being partitioned as a ext4, and then we have our boot EFI drive being partitioned as FAT32. That is absolutely perfect. We do have additional information here with other drives but we're just gonna leave everything at default, hit done. And this is when we're gonna get a warning because what it's gonna do now is actually partition and format and install Ubuntu on the drive that you selected. So if you do have any data on there that is important now is, well, it's now's your very last chance to actually back up. Uh, do back up all your data before you actually go ahead and do all this. But that drive is basically empty, so we're gonna go continue. And now we're gonna go ahead and set up our profile. So for me, I'm gonna go with my name as my name. And then I'm gonna hit tab to go down, give my server a name. My server is gonna be called media. Now let's pick a username. We'll just go with what I used as my name. So we'll go Brandon. And now pick a password. So do a passphrase that is both strong and something that you are not going to forget. So from there we can hit tab and select done. Next, it's going to ask us if we want to install an open SSH server. I do highly suggest you do that. This will allow you to 
open up a Linux terminal on your main computer for example, and then control the system as if you're actually on it. If you have SSH keys on either GitHub, GitLab, Launchpad, or anything like that, you could actually import those through here, but I do not, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go with done. And now here you have a couple different options if you want to install some of the snap packages. There are some pretty good things here that you could go ahead and install if you wanted to. For example, I'm actually gonna go ahead and install the Nextcloud instance because this is something that I actually am gonna end up putting on the server, so I might as well get it done during the installation process. Uh, let's go with the stable version, and then we could go ahead and close this out. Now we can see that I have Nextcloud selected. Now this isn't a Nextcloud tutorial, but this is a way to get, gather some things that you're going to need through this installation process. They do have a lot of other things, such as Docker is a wonderful tool for having different virtualization clusters. You have Microsoft PowerShell. There is quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and go to Done. And now it is actually installing the system and configuring it, and it's actually been doing this since we went ahead and selected the drive that we wanted to install it on. So it shouldn't take too much longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video and I'll be right back when it is complete. All right, so we are done. So once you have the option to reboot now, you're gonna to want to go ahead and select that option. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot, and what I'm gonna do is actually pull out this USB drive, because since I changed my boot order, it's gonna to try to boot to it again. And there she is. So now that I've removed the installation medium, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And then my computer is going to reboot, hopefully into the new Ubuntu server install. There we go, everything's looking pretty good so far. Now it is important to note that this is the very first time it's booting, so it will take a little bit longer than it will every single other time you do boot up your system. All right, so when it's finally booted up, this is the screen that you're gonna see. What we're gonna do is go ahead and type in the username that we just set up, and then it should ask us for our password, so go ahead and type that in. And now it's gonna say that Nextcloud's mounted. It's gonna give us a rundown of what is going on in our system. By default, Ubuntu server is running 209 processes. It'd probably be a little bit less for you because I installed the Nextcloud instance. It's using it 2% of my system memory and 1.4% of the 500 gigabyte hard drive. Okay, so I lied, I needed to do a couple more things. But when it is all done here, it should look something like this. You should have your username at your server name so now you could actually go and start installing things, managing your server. So for example, if we went ahead and ran sudo apt update, type in our password, we could see if there are any updates available to us. And you can see there are 49, so we could go ahead and upgrade those packages. So you just do apt upgrade. Uh, yes to install them all. All right, so our system is now completely updated. So now is when you could actually go and start doing things you want to do. For example, we're gonna go ahead and install something. So let's install two applications. Let's install the absolute essentials on any Linux machine, and that is NeoFetch and HTOP. And HTOP might actually come with Ubuntu server, but I'm not 100% sure. But if it doesn't, the install will go ahead and skip it. So there we go, it's done. So now we could just run a little NeoFetch instance so we can see our system. We can see we are running Ubuntu server 20.04.2 LTS, and we have some of our system information. And then we have HTOP here, so you can actually see live how our system is performing. Now before this, I was running this on a laptop, and I had just HTOP running in the background with the screen open. It looked cool, and it made it really easy to monitor the server. Now with this server, I do have additional drives, and I'm gonna want that drive automatically mounted. And if that's something that you need to do, I will leave a link in the comments down below. It will be the number one pinned comment, so you could go ahead and set your system up by editing the S tab file, so it will automatically mount any other drives to your server. So with all that said, I do hope you have a wonderful day. In the description below, I will link to a couple different projects that you could do with your new Ubuntu install. Uh, with that said, please comment, rate, subscribe, uh, make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.